Hi, I'm Raj Kumar, President and Editor-in-Chief of DevX, here once again at the European Development Days, and joined by Minister Emilia Perez, who's of course the Minister of Finance of Timor-Leste. Uh, we actually had a chance to meet in Tunis yes. know, three or four years ago, and I, I distinctly remember in that meeting you're saying that a donor agency had once provided you with international consultants and staff in your own offices, but that you didn't control, yes. and that you were working to change that situation. I want to ask you about that specific circumstance, but more broadly, this whole issue of country ownership of ministers like yourself owning the development process, taking control of aid budgets. Give us a sense of what your thoughts are on that issue. Well, uh, we've, we've come a long way since I last saw you, yeah. and 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 uh, it's completely changed. Now everything is inside the ministry. It is driven by the ministry, led by us. The donors themselves have turned around. Uh, uh, and I'm now convinced that that is the best way. We recruit our own uh, advisors, even though the, it is financed by the donors, but it's uh, recruited by us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in fact, in Timor-Leste, after the four years, they are now doing a budget support, direct budget support. They put the money in, the, in my treasury for me to actually do that. So, so that's a huge big step, because before, like I said before, they were recruited by the uh, the donors, then they reported to the donors, so we were like always second best. Yeah. Even in the presentation of their work in the ministry, they talked about the program rather than the ministry. So I had to change everything. People had to, to be politically correct. What were you there for? You were there to build the Ministry of Finance. So Ministry of Finance should be the first thing, and then your program is just one, supporting program, right? But they, they did it all the other way around. But now it's different. What do you say, we're here in Europe, so what do you say to European voters who are concerned about budget support? You say, well, we don't control the money, It can there can be corruption or there can be waste. Well, what's your message to them based yes. on your experience? Well, I, yesterday I had a meeting, informal meeting, and I said to them, oh, uh, the fact that you are still talking about this and talking and welcoming the New Deal for engaging in fragile states and talk, having this conversation with fragile states is because you're not happy with what was, you were doing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here talking to me about this. So either you do that or you continue status quo. Sure. So if you're not happy, then you have to find a new way. And I'm offering you a new way. I'm telling you, I've tested it in my country, yeah. that you need to, to test the systems. Because if you continue to do a parallel system, you are undermining your own assistance to the country. Because what is the purpose of your assistance? It's to build that country, to make that country able to do things and sustainable in the future, right? But if you don't use the systems, take the risk. Yes, there may be leakage, but where is the leakage if you don't put the water into the pipe? So once you find out, then you fix that. Uh, and then you narrow down, narrow, minimize uh, the space for leakage. Otherwise, you'll never know. So, uh, and then you don't get out of this vicious circle. And I know this is something you say not only for countries that may be low income, but peaceful, but even conflict countries. I know you chair the G7+, plus 18 yes. conflict countries, yes. and, and you're saying even for countries that are in conflict, there needs to be support for their institutions, budget support, yes. funding directly to ministers. Yes, in at different degrees of, of, of uh, approaches. Uh, but this is why the G7+, plus ourselves, we are taking the initiative of, of trying to articulate how the donors can help us. So we are, we've worked, or we are working, on a, on a fragility spectrum, mm -hmm. where we say there are about five different uh, phases. There's the crisis mode, and in, when it is in crisis, it's recognized by certain symptoms, and then you have to do these type of things. And then when you move to the next phase, which is the rebuild and reform, then you do it in a, you behave in a different mode, vis-a-vis -vis the different types of uh, uh, priorities or goals, because we have peace building and state building goals as the five goals that needs to be addressed at, uh, 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 before we even get to the MDGs. Because it's a fact right. that that uh, fragile states, none, not one single one of them is, is able to reach the MDGs by 2015. Right, and by 2030, uh, we're talking about ending poverty. You sat on that yes. high-level panel, which recommended ending poverty, extreme poverty, as a goal by 2030. That seems impossible to do if you don't address conflict states. Exactly, and that's why you, you notice in the in the high-level panel, we managed to get two goals in there that I'm very, very keen
keen on and I'm promoting it everywhere I go. One is to be, build peaceful societies. You need to have peace, otherwise you can't work on development, really. And then the other one, you need institutions. You need effective, uh, uh, efficient institutions. How do you do it? You do it through using it. You do it through testing it. And how do you do that? By putting your money in there, right. rather than build something parallel to it. Yeah, you, you've you know? had this message for a few years now. Yes. And I want to ask you one last question. Since we're here at the European Development Days, how has the European Commission taken on this challenge? Have you seen a difference in the way they are operating? Are they funding more budget support, in your view, or change the way they look at well, states? In Timor Leste, they are now doing it to my ministry. Globally, I, I don't have the the the, uh, the statistics. However. In the talks, in theory, in policy, their papers, you can see it there. So there is already, like, they're talking about it. They know that you have to have peaceful societies, and they know that you have to build institutions. It's there. They adhere to it. They also uh, support the New Deal. Uh, right recently, for example, they hosted the Somalia uh, New Deal here in, in Brussels. So they are there. But, however, it will take some time before it goes into the micro, you know, the operations. And that is the key. That is the key. Uh, I understand also, for example, another thing is that the donors have to take risk. The European Union, before it was like, no. Now, they actually talk about risk management. So they're like yeah. giving steps towards that. It's a mindset shift, right? Yes. Yes. Well, I know you're at the center of this. You come from a small country, but you're at the center of a big global movement. I know. So thank you for being here. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us at DevX. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate it.